I guess my first question is with regard to SAR number five. It says the BPD officers contacted arrested a suspect for theft and assault. That's a legitimate crime. During the contact, the detainee espoused beliefs and possessed documents consistent with the group, which is known to confront law enforcement. So I guess one of my questions is, if, I don't know if you can tell me this, but what group was it? What documents were they carrying? And it just, I guess it seems to me that the theft and assault, is, that's a crime. But why are we talking about people, the beliefs of certain So first I'll just say that understanding that um, what we were asked to do was provide a summary. And so it, it is by definition uh, lacking in detail because the requirement from last year was specifically non-specific. Uh, so that's what we provided. Uh, in each case, uh, in each one of these, there is a criminal predicate, just like as is required by the council. Uh, I suppose we could be a little bit more clear in, in when we provide these summaries of what that criminal predicate was. Yeah, I, think, I mean, I think the issue is what was what is the issue that triggered the SAR report? Was it because the person said they had certain beliefs, or was it, or was it because they had committed a crime? And my impression is, given the policy that we adopted, is they committed a specific crime. But I guess the issue is we don't want the crime to be a pretense to be reporting on something that somebody's saying. I, I don't have each of those actual uh, SARs with me. I didn't bring those. We only have the summary. Uh, I can assure you that upon review, each one does have a criminal predicate, but I, I completely understand that um, these summaries can be written in a way that explains that better. So are these, are these public documents? The summary is the documents are not. The documents are not a public document. Correct. Um, and I guess it could, just number nine talks about the detainee used terminology consistent with a group that does not believe the United States government and his arrest was therefore valid. I guess once again, somebody's personal views on the U.S. government, why is that something we're talking about? If you're engaged in a criminal activity, it's a legitimate criminal activity that we need to let other departments know about because that may be a crime trend. That makes sense, but I guess my concern once again is it should be, it shouldn't, what was the pretense, what was, what, what led us to do the reporting because the, all, the whole thing about what we're trying to address was let's not be reporting based on what people believe. So what I can say in regards to these SARS reports is that we were just essentially giving an overview and so we were not being very specific because it's not a public uh, document. So we were just trying to give an overview. But we reviewed all of them um, prior to submitting them. Um, and perhaps we'll just look at a better way uh, to write it so that you won't have those questions. So in looking at the general order, certain exceptions that were referenced in, but if, there, if there's activity that quote, rises to a level of criminal conduct, that may be the basis upon which the department would report that. If somebody's engaged in nonviolent First Amendment activity or, you know, activity that isn't really a criminal act, that that isn't the basic pretense that we would be using at the SAR. I think we understand you completely. Is there a written policy between NICRIC and the department? I know this was an issue that was talked about last year. and was referenced in some of the communications that we had received this evening. Good evening, council members. Uh, there's the written policy on 17, but there's no further agreements or um, documentation of any relationship beyond the, uh, the policy. So basically, we're just we're just participating with you, and we'll send this information. There's no like guidelines, um, and then just reinforcing once again the intent of what we had talked about. And you and I have had many conversations, Chief Mead, as has the city manager and I, that what we want to ensure is there is a legitimate crime or threat or terrorist threat or something that poses a threat to public safety. That's what we want to address through the the SAR reporting, consistent with those the limit the standards that we set forth, but that. Just because you're saying something, just because you're look a certain way, you're taking a picture, that that's not going to be the pretense to send the sign. One suggestion you might want to consider tonight is directing us to add the resolution from the September 18th, 2012 meeting to the MOU binder so that those policies are very clearly set forth.